Melodyne is probably more powerful than you imagine. If you're simply just double clicking on blobs for pitch correction, then you're not even scratching the surface. But if you want to squeeze the very best out of your vocals, I've got five Melodyne secrets you need to know. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. By the way, I've got three full Melodyne licenses to give away at the moment. If you want to find out how to be in the running for that, just follow the link in the description down below. Now, I want to get straight into these tips and tricks, starting off, funnily enough, by not dealing with pitch at all. Non-pitch sounds are indicated in Melodyne with these horizontal lines that we can see on some of our blobs. This one here is the S sound at the beginning of the word stand. This one here is a breath in between words. And this one here is the T sound at the beginning of the word too. Let's have a listen to those in context. Was it the way that I stand too close? Now, fine tuning these can really help you to get a polished, professional sounding vocal. I'm going to start off by dealing with that sibilance, that S sound at the beginning of the word stand. Now, often you'll use a D S -er for this, and that's great, but sometimes some really stubborn ones still poke through. And I reckon Melodyne is one of the best tools to use to fix this. I'm going to right click here and go over to my amplitude tool and then down to my sibilant balance tool. And using this tool, I can drag down on that S sound to make it a little bit quieter. I'll do that now. S. And I always like to audition this in context just to make sure it's sounding natural. Let's have a listen. Was it the way that I stand too close? Yep, that's not too bad. Now, it is called a balance tool because it works in two different ways. You can either drag down, as I did then, to reduce the volume of the sibilance, or if you drag upwards, Bus. you can see it reduced the amplitude of the note it's attached to. Now, I don't want to do that on this occasion, but it's worth noting that that's how the tool works. I'll undo that now. Now, I want to adjust how loud this breath is over here. I noticed earlier it's way too loud. So let's have a listen to that. that I stand too close. So what I'm going to do this time is right click and just go to the amplitude tool like so. And then I'm just going to drag down on that breath. And I've gone quite a long way because I think I can and I can still get away with it. Let's have a listen. That I stand too close. Yeah, I really like that. Now, you may be tempted sometimes to delete it completely. I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard to do that and have a listen to that. Stand too close. Yeah, it sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? But you can sometimes get away with it. I find you can mostly do it at the beginning of phrases, and it can help to kind of tidy the whole sound up a little bit. So worth experimenting with. Now, finally, I want to deal with that T at the beginning of the word too. It's actually not loud enough, in my opinion. I want it to sound like the singer is attacking that word a little bit more. Now, I can't really use the balance tool. If I use that and, sort of that and drag upwards, I'll just make the OO sound quieter. So on this occasion, I'm going to use one of the most useful tools that we've got, and it's the split tool. But before I do that, I'm just going to go back to my main tool. It's worth mentioning you can press f1 on your keyboard and your keyboard and that will go back to your main tool and this is a really useful tool because it works in context with the note that you're hovering around so if we're at the beginning for example it's going to help us to uh, change the length of the note we'll look at that later but if we hover just above the blob here you can see it changes to the split tool and if i now double click then I've separated that T from the U in the word too. And now I can go ahead and adjust its amplitude separately. So I'll right click here and go across to amplitude. And I'm going to drag up reasonably significantly, actually. So let's have a listen to that. I stand too close. 
Mm. Yeah, I like that. It's perfect. It just feels like she attacks it a little bit more. So it's very handy to go in and fine tune these things. Spend half an hour or something on it on a vocal and it can make the world of difference. But this is not the only non-pitch related thing we can do in Melodyne which can really help to improve a vocal. Hi folks, future mic here during editing and I just realized I forgot to mention that most of the features you'll see in today's video are available in some of the lower priced versions of Melodyne. However, it does come in different versions at different price points. To get all of the details on that and perhaps buy Melodyne, don't forget to follow the links in the description down below. Timing is another aspect of our performance that we can affect with Melodyne. But I bet if some of you have attempted to use the timing tools without reading the manual, you may have found them a little confusing. Perhaps you went to the beginning of a note like so, hovered your mouse over it and tried to drag the beginning of a note out and nothing happened. Well, the main reason for that is because of the kind of snapping tools which are currently switched on. So I'd recommend in order to really understand what's happening with timing you first switch those off so I'm going to go up to options up here then I'm going to go down to time grid and then go to active and deactivate that option there now I'm going to go to the end of my note again and drag it and you'll see what happens here not only am I dragging out the beginning of my note but it's affecting the note which is before it and that's because all of these notes are kind of joined up together they've got a relationship with each other so yeah, you can extend the length of the note, but you're squashing the note next to it. Perhaps that's not what you want. So we can actually detach these notes from each other. Let's do that. But this time I'm just going to do it with this note down here. Again, if I try and drag it around, it affects that note up above. So what I'm going to do is right click go over to the note separation tool and then go down to separation type tool. Now when I release, you can now see these kind of light gray lines which have appeared joining the notes up and that does indicate that they are joined. And all I have to do is double click now using this tool and I can separate these notes from one another and you can see that indicated here. Now if I just press F1 on my keyboard, go back to my main tool, and then I grab the end of this note, I can drag it out and it doesn't affect the note after it. I can also completely drag the whole note around by dragging from the middle as well. Although I'm probably going to get a result here that I don't want for this performance. What I do want to do, however, is actually change the timing of this note over here. It's a little late. Let's have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Sorry, I misspoke. It's a little early, so I'm just going to make it a little later. So on this occasion, I don't mind if it affects the note before it. So I'm just going to hover over the front of that note and just drag it this way, just a little bit like so. Let's have a listen to that. Was it the touch of my hand? Now, I really like this compared to some more sort of quantized timing features that I've used in the past. I find if you go in and just manually adjust the things that you specifically want to change, you'll end up with a kind of more natural result, in my opinion. I'm going to do something I really don't want to do now, and that's expose some of my vocals to you from a performance that I'm really not very happy with, but at the same time, I'm not sure I can improve upon. Let's have a listen to the passage that we're going to be working with. In your memory, and I'll hear the sea. Okay, so with the lead vocals, I was already singing at a pretty high pitch for me. But for the harmony vocals, I was singing at a really high pitch for me. And that's where all the trouble really lies, in my opinion. And to further my embarrassment, I'm now going to play you those harmony vocals in solo. Oh, I don't want to do this. And your memory And I'm here I 
I don't like the tone of it, but I can live with that in the mix. But I really don't like the pitch drift which is going on. So it's mainly that that we're going to be fixing. But first of all, I need to fix this first note over here. Look at the pitch curve. It's all over the place. So I'm going to tame the pitch modulation first of all by, first of all, I'm going to double click on the note to make sure it's centered. It already is, so that's fine. Then I'm going to right click, go to the pitch tool, and then down to the pitch modulation tool. And then as I drag up and down, I can affect the modulation. Let's fix that now. <laughs> OK, that's probably a little bit more natural. And before I play it, I'm just going to double click on this little note here just so that its pitch is centered there. So let's have a listen to that now. And your memory. OK, I can maybe live with that. Again, don't like the tone, but it's buried in the mix. I'll go up to this note up here and simply double click on it just to fix that one. But then we've got this big long one in the middle here. And what's really happening here is a lot of pitch drift. You can see here from the pitch curve, it mostly stays in the center of our blob here, but then definitely drifts upwards towards the end. So I'm going to use my pitch drift tool for that. I'll right click, go over to the pitch tool, and then go down to the bottom to the pitch drift tool. And then I can drag and balance all of this out. Let's do that now. And you can see here now, if I deselect this, that it's staying roughly in the middle all the way through. Let's double click on it now just to center it um, to the note of G. So we'll do that. And let's have a quick listen to that. Certainly a lot better than it was before. There's a little sort of warble in the middle there, a kind of extra bit of vibrato, which I probably didn't intend to do. Um, we could tame that if we wanted to. We could leave it there for character, but I'm going to go for taming it. So I'm going to use the note separation tool again. I'll just hover my mouse above here and sort of do a little bit of separation there before my warble and a little bit after my warble like so. I'll go back to my regular or main tool. I'll double click on all of these so that we're centering that pitch there. Then I'm going to again right click and go to my pitch modulation tool and then I can tame that and just make sure it's a little bit more consistent with the rest of the note. Let's have a listen now. Now, if we listen to that in context with the lead vocal, which it's doing a harmony to, it's worth always doing that just to check that they're sounding OK together. OK, that's better than it was for sure. OK, now there's a little thing that I noticed further over here. You could leave this in. There's a big pitch drop down here with this note, yeah? Uh, that can sound natural. Let's have a listen to it by itself, first of all. Now, it is supposed to be a kind of a slide down, but I think it could sound better if it doesn't happen quite so early. So again, I'm going to go over to my note separation tool manually this time, actually. Then I'm just going to do a little bit of note separation here. OK, just to split these two parts here. Go back to my main tool, double click, center these like so. Have a listen. Yeah, I'm quite a lot happier with that. Now, the other thing that we can attempt to change is the transition between notes. Now, what I'm going to do is just sort of zoom in a little bit here. I'm just going to go to my, my zoom tool like so by clicking F1 several times. And I'm going to zoom in like so. I always struggle with this little bit. And then I'm going to just go to my move tool like so. So we can focus in on here. Now to affect a transition, we need to make sure that we're on our pitch tool. So we'll go to that, we'll click on that, and you can see this yellow line has appeared, yeah? That's the transition between these two notes. So what I can do is just hover over the end of this note. You can see the icon changes to the transition tool, and I'll just drag that and I can make it really, really tight. Let's do it over on this one as well. 
tighten them both up. I've just noticed this one's quite a way off pitch. So I'm just going to correct that and I'll have a listen to that. Okay, now this one is neither here nor there. I think it's supposed to be there. Let's have a listen. Okay, not too bad. It's a little harsh sounding actually here. So I'm going to go back to my pitch tool, do that. And I'm actually going to make those note transitions. I'm just going to experiment, to be honest with you, and make them really loose, so to speak. So much more gradual like this. Let's go extreme, yeah? Let's try that. This is always worth trying, especially for this kind of note where you're doing a slide. Now have a listen to this. that actually sounds pretty natural, doesn't it? So I could be happy with that, I guess, in the context. We'll have a listen. I think you get the idea. Now that we've got the pitch tools under our belt and we've done some timing and we've adjusted sibilance and all that kind of good stuff, let's put it all together in my next little experiment. Have a listen to this vocal from this rather large part of this song. Now, we'll often try to make vocals like this a lot larger sounding by doubling them, by creating a copy or recording a new version, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. And I usually like to keep one in the middle as well. Now, beginners will often make the mistake of simply duplicating that lead vocal and panning one duplicate to the left and one to the right. I've already done that. You can see those two copies up here. I'm going to unmute them so you can hear the difference they make. Please believe me, though you feel... I'll stop there. It's really making no difference at all. It's perhaps just a little bit louder. That's not what we want. We want a sort of a, a width to the whole thing. But we can't create width because these are identical. And it's really in the differences between performances where we create the, the width that we're looking for. Now, it may be perhaps not very convenient for you to record this again. So this is a really good way of doing it by using Melodyne. I'm going to go to one of my duplicates here. Yeah, I'll go to uh, the second one I made here. I'm going to do a couple of things in preparation. I'm going to go up to options. I'm going to go down to pitch grid and make sure that no snap is selected. And also on time grid, I want to deactivate the snapping for that again. What that's going to enable me to do is really push some of these notes around. And I'm going to do it as randomly as I can. So I'm just going to grab a note here and just push it up or down a little bit. And you'll see me do it for a few of these. Perhaps went a bit far. You get the idea? And I've already done a couple of things by mistake, which I actually wanted to do on purpose. And that I've accidentally adjusted the timing of some of them. And that's one of the things I want to do. I'll just finish off over here. Okay, maybe gone a bit overboard. Let me just shuffle some of the timing around. Yeah, like so, yeah. Just doing little nudges, yeah. Now let's have a listen now. Please believe me, though you feel me. I think it's getting there. Let's just quickly do it with the other one. So I'll switch over to the right channel because remember, these are pan left and right. I might actually just help myself out a little bit by zooming in uh, this way a little bit. And I'll just do the same quickly again. Shuffling them around just as randomly as I want. And just the timing. 
just nudging it around a little bit not trying to do anything particularly precise here yeah i'm just trying to mess it up a little bit randomly let's have a listen now please believe me though you feel me this is nothing new okay we're definitely getting more width they may be a little bit too loud those duplicates i'm i'm hearing and we're getting a slight phasey effect to it now if you get that it's perhaps because you didn't adjust the timing and the pitch quite enough in some cases so you probably want to be a little bit more careful than i've been in this case but there is one other tool in melodyne i want to show you which can actually really help to improve this situation the final tool that i'm going to talk about is kind of my secret weapon when it comes to vocal doubling in melodyne like this and it's the formant tool now i don't want to go into too much detail about what formants are but the main takeaway from them is that they change the character of the sound in some way let's hear it in action but first of all i'm just going to select all of these notes here then i'm going to right click and i'm going to go over to the formant tool let's just have a quick listen to the first few notes of this performance and i apologize it's all going to be from the left speaker for the moment please be Let me do quite a dramatic change to the format here by dragging down. Have a listen now. Please believe me. It's pretty dramatic, isn't it? I've probably gone a little bit too far for my needs, so I'll just drag up. Yeah, that's fine. Then I'm going to go to my second double over here. I'll highlight all of these again just to make sure I'm going to adjust them all at the same time. And then again, I'm going to drag these down, but as random as I can so that they're not the same as the other ones. Yeah. Now you could go through in actual fact and do individual notes if you wanted to, but I'll, I'll keep it simple for now. So I've done both of those. Let's actually listen to all of those vocals together again. Please. just for some context let's mute those doubles now and have a listen to how the vocal originally sounded by itself Please believe me, though you feel me. so you can hear we made quite a change didn't we again with the doubles Now, certainly I would do some fine tuning here to improve it, but I think you get the idea. I'm intrigued to know which one of these tips has been most useful for you. Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to check the description for information about that giveaway. And by the way, you don't have to like or subscribe to this channel to be entered into the giveaway, but it's much appreciated if you do. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next video.